Hi guys, welcome back to the video review. Today we've got this keyboard that we'll be reviewing. It's a Cyborg Strike 7. I was a bit hesitant to get this keyboard purely because of two things, the price. It is a really expensive keyboard, so it was a bit of a plunge to, to go ahead and buy. And it's also not mechanical. I have been using it on mechanical for, for a little while now. I'm not a huge typist, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, I do do a bit of gaming, but I was brought up and used all the G15s and all that, so I wasn't sort of too concerned going over to the old style sort of rubber dome cap buttons. Um, I was going to do an unboxing, but I started using a bit to, to learn about it all. Um, but I was going to put it back in the box, but I decided not to because that would take forever. Here's the box over here. As you can see, the box is just literally crazy. Uh, so it comes like that. It all comes sort of broken up in its segments. You get this bit, you've got that bit, and everything's divided up in there. So to put that back together, it would just be too much of a mission. So I'll just put this aside. So it pretty much comes like this on the table. Every bit comes in its own little sort of sort of heat shrink, sort of clear, clear um, wrap. It's all sealed. Um, any soft parts are in foam, or delicate parts are in foam. So we'll just go everything from left to left to right. This is your little sort of maybe sort of your LAN carry pack. Um, it comes like this closed. It's the same as the uh, their their mice, the cyborg mice. They come with these as well. So you get a additional length of cable so this cable is if you change the keyboard around a bit it's so uh, it'll make it reach i'll go into that a bit later on and also you get a tool this tool is vital for securing all the bits together when you make it one full keyboard you don't have to screw it all together they've done a great job of everything clips in and you don't have to screw it in but i guess if you're carrying it around a bit to lands and that it's good to good to screw it in so there's all your little screws you get at the moment i don't have a screwed in because it's all in pieces you get this little key cap remover and you get all these spare keys so you can see these first two on the left side they're the stock keys you get i've already replaced the custom ones and on the right you get these other keys now these keys are very similar to stock but you can just see they've got a slight perforated edge on one side there, that's on the left side. So I guess they're just a different tactic feel or tactile feel when you're when you're feeling them. I'll show you the ones you get on the left here. If you go over to the keyboard, the ones you get on the left are these really nice ones. They're sort of a flat keyboard that have a rubber sort of half of the key has like a, a rubber dome on it, which is a nice feel if you're in the dark or something and you can feel the key straight away. But this keyboard is backwards, so you don't really have any issue looking at the keys as well. So that's everything you get in that little pack there. Um, over onto this little piece here. This little piece is just sort of a little sort of control knob button thing that you can attach to either the left side over here or you can attach to the numpad over here. So this just gives you one, two, three, four additional buttons. So you can set these to macros, volume up, down, back, forwards or anything you like. Um, all right, up here we have the screen. Uh, this screen is designed, it can, it can slide into the keyboard, so it slides into this side here in a, in a hole, in a groove there. Now, you don't have to screw this in, I haven't screwed it in yet because it, it clicks in really well. As you can see, there's, it gets screwed in by two holes, but there's two additional holes where when you slide it in, two little sort of latches click into the holes and they secure it in self, uh, itself in. And that's with most things that clip in, they just lock into place. And you can also put it onto the numpad like that as well if you want to uh, deck this out with the screen so we'll go into that a bit later um, now on to this okay this cool little device this is the main thing why i bought this keyboard uh, i've never had a screen sort of which uh, sorry keyboard with a touch screen on it before and it's just uh, really really cool so this has a little kickstand so it can stand up on itself i was even thinking about mounting this somewhere you could stick it on like a, a monitor or wherever you like secure it on your desk it doesn't have to be on the keyboard just have to it has to be in length of the uh, shortest cable just mind remember you can swap this cable with the spare one or the extra one that came in the case so you, you can have them uh longer if need be so we've got up the top left you've got your mute for your speakers mute for your mic and then you've got volume up down like that and then this sort of round ball thing just shows the uh, Mad Cats logo and all it does is changes color when you go through your profiles. So this keyboard has three profiles. You can set the keyboard three entire times. So you can have backlit and all the macros set for one profile, a different backlit color and all the keys set 
with something else. And the next button is the sort of, this is the main button you'll be using on, on this. This is pretty much the home button. So say you go to your apps, all you need to do is hit that button. So it's a bit like the home button on an iPhone. If you use an, I, an iPhone before, you should be right with this. So you click on your volume there and to go back, just straight back there. So that's pretty much, you're always sort of two clicks away from um, everything on this main screen. And then I'll go through these options a bit more once I, or sorry, all these layouts on the screen a bit more once I get the keyboard all together. Um, next on the keyboard, we just, oh, sorry, on the screen up here, we have your profile buttons. So they got one, two, and three, and that's all they do. And I'll just get a shot at the back of this. It does have a little USB hub on there, which is good. So it's just standard USB 2. Yeah. And this keyboard does need a power pack to plug in, which is pretty understandable. I'll just find it. There it is there. Just needs a power pack to plug in, which is kind of understandable because it does run a screen and it takes a little bit of power more than I think two than what two USBs would. Okay, moving down a bit, we have the main sort of keyboard section. You'll probably need this the most. Um, you don't have to use this. You can simply just use the numpad if you want. You can deck everything out on the numpad like that uh, and plug it all in. You don't have to use this, but I guess if you're going to fork out this much on the keyboard, you might as well use all of it. Um, so it's got a fancy little, little space bar. I think they've done this um, for when you connect these two together. You can slightly ride your thumb a little bit lower and it allows you access to these a little bit better than having to travel all the way up the top. So that's a uh, neat little feature. Um, the uh, sort of the material they've used on front is a, a really nice sturdy rubber. It's not a real shiny gloss. Uh, you get no fingerprints on here and it will stay clean for a long time. You've got your uh, caps lock, num lock and scroll lock up there. They're nice and hidden away. They don't like stand out. And, that, and if I go over to the back, one thing about this keyboard I wasn't quite sure was how flimsy it will be once it's all together. If you have a look at the back, this is all aluminium. It's very strong. And if I pop out the sort of kickstands on the back, they're sort of like an aluminium steel kickstand. And once it's all together, it just looks so cool from the back. So if you can have that sanding there, and then one, once you get the others on, it is so sturdy. And also we have a little clip here. That's just for when you run a cable to your numlock side, you can clip it in. And then we just have all the different connectors. So pretty much the keyboards, all, all the different parts of this keyboard, all get connected via little mini USB ports that come on there and then all the cables. It's pretty well labeled. It tells you BC and then A, and then you just look at the back on the control unit here and then you just follow which one goes to where. So it's not too bad. And if, if you're not looking and it's in the dark, and one segment doesn't light up, you just swap it around and it lights up. Okay, moving down now, we've got this cool little, sort of, you don't have to use this. This is like a sort of a, just a, a palm rest for when you're on your WASD keys. And to go a little bit further, they added two little keys. I've actually set this scroll knob to sort of scroll up and down, the same as a mouse. So if you're in Chrome, you can just scroll up and down. And then you have a trigger, which I've set to reload. And this is really good saving to have to move up to reload. It's actually closer. I'll actually clip this in and this actually just connects for um, four little contacts there and four little pin contacts so I'll just clip that in now because uh, I can't quite see that just uh... all right so that's clipped in now and then that just clips in and you can see it you can hear it clicking now so that's when it it's making contact and then you can slide this up or down so for me that's probably a bit far but you can just push this lever and slide it all the way up and then when, when you have your hand on there, I don't have a relatively big hand and pretty much my thumb nearly touches the space bar and that trigger both at once. So it's literally just right there and then the scroll is right there as well. I don't know if I'll use that scroll in any games, but um, I've only had this for a few days. All right, moving on, we have another palm rest, this one here. This one I don't use so much because I sort of have my hand on the mouse and my other hand over here. So I guess the other two, two armrests will probably get used if you're doing typing or programming in that when you're not so much using the mouse. So I'll just clip these in here. Like that, okay. That's in there and these also just slide out by just pulling this in and out. So I guess if you have really big hands or you like to have a gap, uh, you can slide them out. Okay. So now we have your numpad over here and your arrow keys. 
Uh, you've also noticed they've actually decked out um, some little programmable buttons around the arrow keys. And if you do notice, they're actually sort of low profile. I kind of like that because normally on a standard keyboard, there's actually blank spot all around where those are. So instead of having keys that are higher, you might you might normally knock them or something if they're the same height, but it's good that they're nice and low profile. And you can configure these the same as your other uh, macro keys. Okay, let's just clip this together. And this has the, uh, as you can see, the same contact points. There's no contact points on here, but this is purely just for when you plug in this. You can plug this little palm trigger rest on this side if you want. So if you can, you can actually convert this into its own gamepad if you like, and that'll work there. So just let me plug this in there. Okay, I'll hook it all together and I'll clip it in. So you just plug that one in the back there. You plug this little one over here like that, and that lights up. And there you just slide that. I won't slide that in yet because I'll plug this one in over here. And the cables are really nicely braided. It's actually the same as the uh, MMO7 mouse. I actually got the uh, Cyborg MMO7 mouse first, and um, I fell in love with the mouse, so I just had to get this keyboard. Okay, let's plug this uh, pretty much all clips in. Put these feet up on here, like this. And you can also reverse the uh, numpad can clip in on this side if you like it. I don't know who would ever use that, but um, if you wanted to, you can put the numpad there. So you can make it really neat. I can plug the cable in like that. It comes with a little separator, a little plastic thing you can open up and slide the cables. And now I can just slide this in like that, and that just clips in, and then um, that is it. So I'll actually peel off these. I haven't actually taken these off yet, but you've got good protective clear things on there. And I'll see if I can get this one off here. Like that. There we go. Okay, so that's it all together. So it's actually not that... I don't think it's that much bigger than a standard keyboard. It's definitely probably a little bit wider. But um, it's actually not as big as I thought it would be. And if I put my uh, MMO 7, 7 mouse up to the side of it, it actually sort of, sort of, they just sort of match so well. So if you go over to the mouse, it actually looks pink, those colours, but it's just a camera that is set to red. So, Alright, so let's just run through the software and what you can do with, um, with it. So we'll just load it up. Where is it? Okay. Oh, there is it. I just can't see it because I'm blind. Okay, profile editor. This is it when you start it up. Um, it's pretty much the same as the MMO7 one. The uh, MMO7 mouse setup was great. Uh, I've never seen a program with so much functionality before. Um, so this is pretty much exactly the same. So it just gives you a brief little intro there. Programming, if you've used the mouse, it's pretty much the same. You've got three modes, so that's what I mentioned on the on the front screen here with the uh, the Mad Cats logo. When you change it through like that, it actually switches the modes on the top of the. So if I go to two, it goes to two, three goes to three, and one goes to one. So first off, you've got all your different parts of this keyboard on here. So we've got this little bit to the left. I can set each one. We've got the lower part, sorry, the top part of the screen, you can set uh, you can set 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can set 12 different apps. So you can set these to macros, you can set these to like Google Chrome, any type of app you like. And then the next one does the bottom half of it. They just couldn't fit it all on to configure it all at once because you'd run out of room. And now we have the little palm rest trigger. So you've got each one, so you've got anti-clockwise and clockwise for that, uh, for that roller and then you've got the button itself, so you single click on each one. And we've got the numpad, so you've got, see those slightly highlighted ones, you can configure those. Uh, I'll just show you with um, configuring a key, we'll just go through one, so you pretty much click on there, you right click, find it handy how it's got straight away the most popular keys, windows left, right, scroll up, down, or you've got hotkeys. So you can go through and it's just got a bunch of redefinements, so you have music if you like, you could have volume, just other standard things. Um, the keyboard does have good media controls, which I'll go into. Um, it's also got some advanced features, so I'll just hit enter. I can hit this arrow, and I can say I'm programmed. Um, you can do new key presses. You can even do advanced uh, macros. I found this on the uh, mouse. It's really good for 
delaying times. Like I can hold the shift for that much time or I can keep holding it. And then, so that was three seconds hold and it's just so many things that you can do. I actually had to start uh, Googling different types of um, macros and that that people had used because there's just so many out there. Um, Cause I can set one up before I set my mouse up, some for Photoshop and that. So I'll intend to do the same with this keyboard. I can set different functions um, for different keys. Okay, it's also got a nice test. You can test out your keys there and all that. And it says um, black gray. It just tells you what happens when each key, key is responding or pressed or not pressed on that. Okay, we to the launcher. It does find a lot of your programs. I okay, as you see, the first one's 3D Mark. Starts with three, so that's the first one. Uh, I did have to add some ones that I didn't find. Like if you have a program that doesn't actually get installed, if it just runs purely out of a folder, you can just go browse. And um, one thing I know you can't do is you can't just simply change this icon. You have to physically download a third-party program, not by Cyborg, but just any program that will physically change an icon to an EXE. Uh, sorry, change the icon for an EXE. So as you can say, say this 3D Mark icon, I wanted to change it to a different 3D Mark icon. You have to pretty much sort of hack into the EXE, change the icon, reload it in here, and it will come up with the new icon. So it's not a huge deal, I guess, but if you're peculiar with your icons, you might like to change them. So what you do to change it, to set this grid up, you just click on an empty one, and then you click on the app you want, and that's 3D Mark. I'll click on something else. So it looks like the ATI control panel. It's got another one, calculator. What else do we have here? Something good, something good, something good. Let's see, mini player. What's that? Looks like Minesweeper. There we go. And why don't we put the uh, software for the um, profile editor? Apply that, and that's straight away. So I'll click over here and apps. And as you can see, I did those one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's it there. So I'll just click on one now, and it's really responsive. I wasn't quite sure how this touch screen would be. So you just click on it and it actually does give you a little shadow above the icon and, that, and as you can see that's there now. So I'll click that again with it on there and it just straight away really, really responsive. Okay, so let's just go back to this. I think that's it for the um, profile editor. It does have your uh, programming for these keys are different than the launcher. So that's one thing you need to sort of um, was a bit unclear when I first got it. You've got these two launchers that look the same. Uh, this launcher over here is for all your assigned applications and that like media player and all that. The programming over here, these are macro buttons for, if you look at the little screen over here, you've got a um, set of macros. So this is for when you're in a game, you can set like maybe, I'm not sure with um, role playing games and where you can set a combo to do something. Um, and then you can you can label it on here with a photo so we can do edit icons So let's just say in a game maybe on where you have to buy stuff You can um, actually you have to go to edit command you have to actually have the button doing something first So I'll have it doing that save it untitled so now that button is doing something you do edit icons I can click on that and I can just add the shopping cart So if there's a game that needs a shopping cart or something or it resembles that you need to buy something and I can save that. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen this for the first time I've used the profile. I want you to save it. You can just save it as anything you like. And then I can go to activate profile. And now if we go have a look now, we've got a little shopping cart. <coughs> now this one is good where you can actually import any icon you like. It just has to be 80 by 80 pixels. Um, and then you can just make any you like in Photoshop. Like, I think a lot of games have their own custom icons, so you can import an image, anything you like. I think that's a great feature, it just would have been nice if they did it on the launcher for these icons as well. Because some, some games or things you might like come with multiple icons, but they only have one startup icon. So that's pretty straightforward there, it gives you a standard set there, like grenades and that. I don't really think you want to touch the screen when you want to throw a grenade and that. It's a little bit sensitive for that, but um, and then you just got support over there. <coughs> Alrighty, let's go over to the screen now, and we'll run through each thing. Um, first off, you can't change the background. It might be in a future update. Um, that would have been nice. It is full color. I don't know what the uh, what the res is um, or the uh, pixel pitch in that, but it is it is really nice. I'll just see how well that's coming up on the camera. That's actually looking pretty good on that camera. 
and it's a really nice screen. It just pretty much looks like a standard LCD on a uh, computer monitor. Another thing to notice is it's got the time and date. It picks that straight from my PC. So I guess whatever that's set to, this is what this will be set to. And at the moment, as you can see, I just built this PC and it says it's 2005, so I haven't set up the date. So that's why that says 2005. And the little green bit there tells you that I've got Profile Untitled activated in the uh, Profile Editor, which is the one I just saved then. So let's go through. So at the moment I'm on Profile 1 as it's red, number 1 at the top. And let's click on there, there are your apps. That's the first icon. Next one. We have music, I have been using this, it works with Winamp, you just have to enable global hotkeys and then you can just be like play, next, and that works great. I won't fire up any music, I don't have any speakers, but that works good. Um, these are your volume controls, so you've got your mic control over here, slide it up, slide it down. The touch is really good, I haven't had a problem with uh, anything not sort of working or touching properly. You can either slide it if you want, or you can just touch it to where you want it to go. Um, it is resistive, it's not capacitive, so you can't do any fancy... Uh, uh, multi-touching and stuff like that. That would have been a nice feature, but I guess cost is an issue with devices like that. And I don't think you really need multi-touch in a keyboard. So, and then this feature off to the right, you can see it's segmented into two. This half here is when Windows picks up extra devices that will play sound. Like, so you have Chrome, you got Win Windows Media Player. You can just keep on scrolling through. At the moment, I've got nothing open. But if you had Chrome, you can turn the volume down for Chrome. You can turn the volume down for say media players but you can leave your master volume at what you like and then you've got this volume over there um, and then you can just can you just click those yep you can mute them straight from there as well so and then let's just see that's a little bit tricky down there but yeah that's muting down there and let's go back and then this is a nice feature you've got your lighting just a moment on profile one you just have to probably make sure most important thing is you're doing you know what profile you're doing when you're editing this because if you're in a random one and then you switch it back to another one you might be completely mixed up so make sure you're on the profile you want to be on and this just pretty much changes through what you want so it's got some custom ones here green so if you want to stand back and get the get the colors there you've got red up the top orange green light blue purple and then pink and you can go one step further by you can actually slide the rgb and you can change them to whatever you want so that's pretty neat. Um, and then you got your brightness. And that's it there. So all the way down or all the way up. Um, some people have been saying they don't like they don't like keyboards that show light around the keys. They only like the keys to be lit up. Um, I don't mind them showing around the keys. I think that looks nice. It's just a personal preference. I think it would be cost more just to get each key lit up because most times they just put an LED under each key and I think mainly mechanicals do that. But um, I don't mind how this looks. If it's too bright, you can simply just turn it down to say that. And that's it. Okay, back over to the next one. Have a clock. This is pretty much the time. And there's two types. You've got analog digital. Pretty simple there. Next one. Have a uh, stopwatch. Haven't actually used this yet, but I think you just click it. And then you've probably got lap times. You can just click and refresh and that. So however a standard stopwatch works, there we go. You've got a lap and then another lap. You can uh, go down again and just hit back, and that's it. We have a timers here. You can set these. I've set these for five minutes. Sorry, that's five seconds, 15 seconds, and 30 seconds. So you can just configure each one here by setting it's a nice little scroll through. You can set each timer. So maybe if you cook a steak every night or something, and each side's 30 seconds, and you're doing some gaming, you can put it on and just be like, bam. And then at the end, it's done, so you can go home. So that's a neat little feature, saving you having to get out of your game or anything. Uh, this is a fancy little feature. It looks nice. Windows lock button. As you can see, Windows is uh, normal, working there. And then you've got this nice little feature. You just click that, and then it locks it. And now that is not working at all. So that's nice in game. Um, my simple, a, lot, a lot of gaming keyboards do this these days, but it's not here either a fancy function F something you got to move your hands around or do it from the software but, but this is literally if you hit the main menu like this all you got to do is one click another click bam and it's locked and that's it and it actually now shows you from within the menu that it is locked which is a, a great little feature there all right next down we have settings uh, this settings is calibration we won't do that we'll go back I've already done that that's just pretty much reboots the system boots it up in its little uh, calibration and you just do the five points all corners and the center and that's it we've got language we'll set that as default we've got brightness 
and a nice little feature is you can set how long you like the screen to stay on for so I can set it for two seconds and it's off so it's pretty much instant so I can set it for two minutes and it will stay on for two minutes and two seconds so I like to leave it on a good time it's not like a phone where it's running off batteries I'm running off power it's not going to do any it's not going to like like lose power or anything it's not going to chew anything so I just leave it for two minutes because I do like to see it lit up for a while um, that was everything there yep yeah. And we got your macros, which we saw before. You can set one to like maybe control or delete, um, bam, and you could lock your PC from or, or Windows key L, things like that. Um, next one is I find this one nice. Um, there's some things here I can just let's have a look. Click on these. Actually, yep. Trash that. I've been someone's been typing on here. Trash that one. So this is a little journal. So you can go back, click on here. So they're now cleared. And then you can just click here. So as you notice, there are ones in there before. I physically moved this keyboard from one PC to another, and it's kept everything I had on here. So it saves everything to the keyboard, which is great. So I could just be, this is my keyboard, and then you're done. So it actually takes control over your whole keyboard. So you've got no Windows uh, control here. So I, I wasn't quite sure how that would work, which is great how, how it sort of locks it. And then you can just hit back, and now that saved it as, as one note there. So, probably not really important, but a handy little feature as is. And then we've got another feature, it's got TeamSpeak built in. Um, that's great if you use it. Uh, I don't really use it, so just got your players up there and your room, and it'll come in handy with your mute um, controls over here. Um, the only downside about this, it would be nice if they had more sort of plugins, like they may release more, but I'm sure you could put like a little Facebook app or just when a message, someone's messaging you. It doesn't have to be too elaborate, just, uh, just something like that. Um, alrighty, so that's everything now. We might just go into um, showing you how this looks using it as just a keypad. It's actually really sturdy to undo the um, undo the um, palm rest from the bases, so we probably don't want to be doing it all the time. Okay. So you might have a mechanical keyboard that you prefer more or something uh, and you just want to use this one as a gamepad or something like that. Um, there are a few gamepads already out on the market but there's probably none that are quite as crazy with this one. So I'll just unplug this. So this has literally taken about 30 seconds to do. Um, now I've got the wrong, oh, I've got longer cables than needed but let's see if this one will fit. So you just plug that one in like that, like that, and then we'll move this out of the way. And you can unplug this cable. On. I'm just going to leave it in there like that. And now you've got a beastly little numpad which has a screen, same features as before. You've still got these controls you can customize. You've still got these, and all these will be saved as they were before. You could have a different profile for when you move it into this compartment. You hit that, and then now this could profile two could configure it for when you're using it like this. So it's just the amount of options you can do with this keyboard is just unlimited. So um, I think that's everything with that. So um, overall, I think this is a fantastic product. Um, I think the price range is pretty much right. Um, for something like this, um, you can spend at least $200 on other keyboards and you probably don't get a screen. Um, it's not mechanical. I've had no problems typing on this. I've, I game the same, I type the same. If anything, I type a little bit better. I find it, I've had troubles typing on mechanicals. Uh, I don't know why. I just hit too many keys and that. But um, but yeah, um, a great little keyboard and with their mouse as well. Um, I didn't do a review on them on the mice, but uh, the keyboard they just go great together. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.